inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, and welcome back to Night Your Mother's Hobbies. Today, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm fucking doing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing wall items. So, like this fireplace. You can see that, uh, just like in the tables, I've added some extra stuff. Um, skulls and rats and little potion bottles from my my bits box. Uh, just dotted them all around. There's also um, a skull inside the bookshelf there. So, you know, you can, you can put the stuff on the shelves if you want, or on top, however you want to do it. Um, this is how I've set them up. Uh, and I also have one that has nothing on top, so let's get started. Alright, so first things first, we're going to do that flat black and dry brush. Just get everything covered. Same old, same old. I'll put the link up in the corner for you, and then you can just click on that if you want to check it out. But we're basically just going to do a Xenithal dry brush, or as a lot of people are calling it, uh, slap chop, um, to get ready for some contrast paints and give us our luminance values and whatnot. And we can see what we're doing. So they look like that. And uh, they also look like this. All right, as usual, we're going to use our snake bite leather to do all the wood stuff. So I've got all three of the wooden bookshelves here, our shelving units, and we're just going to do our wood like normal. So paint along the grain and in sections, and you know, don't be too slow, but be precise you don't want pooling and tide marks and stuff like that so just do your best but that's how we're doing it and we're going to do the wood for all these shelving things all the same here you can see uh, what it's like to paint inside that filigree or that ornamental design just get all that contrast paint right in those cracks and in the recesses and really bring out that detail. And here, don't forget to do the inside of the bookshelf, so I'm showing you how to do that. Even though we're going to be starting with the cupboard, it's good to know. Just dab it, and dot it, and spackle it. You know, whatever you can do to get it back there while being uh, at least a little bit tidy. And then you can pull away from the wall, and that's how you can do the top of each of the shelf parts. Next up, we're going to do our metallic blocking for the silver metals. So Basilicanum Gray is what I use. You can use any sort of thinned out gray wash. This is what I'm using, and we're just going to go over all the parts that you want to be silver metallic. We're also going to use this for our little rat guy up here. We're going to do his fur in this Basilicanum Gray. You don't need to be too tidy here because we are going to go over the nose and the ears and the, the tail and whatnot with some, some layer highlights. But do your best. Alright, so next up is the bone parts. We're going to use Skeleton Horde for the bone parts. That's this bone on top. That's all there is for this. All right, Gullum and Flesh for the rat flesh. Real quick. Uh, I do the tail, the nose, the ears a little bit, just little dots, and uh, his little feet. Don't forget about those toesies. All right, now back to the metallics. We're gonna finally put some uh, true metallic metal on there, and we're using gun metal for that. Vallejo model air and we're gonna go over all the stuff that we blocked in with that basilicana gray before all right so after that we're gonna use known oil gloss citadel shade paint 
Uh, I use gloss on my metallics because I like how it really goes into the cracks. Uh, so it's also going to give us a nice uh, satin sheen, or at least help us keep a satin sheen when we do our matte varnish at the end. Uh, up next, Wraith Bone for the highlights on the bone. So this little skull up here, we're just going to highlight up so those cheeks, the nosy bit, top of the head. Now that that Gulliman flesh is dried, we're going to go in with Kislev flesh for a little bit of a highlight. So dab that onto his toesies, his nose, his ears, and the tail. So this one might be a surprise, but we're actually going to do the filigree, the ornate carving as Retributor armor. We're going to make it gold. Uh, sorry about the defocus here. Uh, I'll try to get better at that in the future, but for now, just bear with. We'll go back. Um, so we're going to use this Retributor armor for all of the gold ornate carving parts. So just go in there and, and try to be as neat as you can. It's all raised, so you can try to use the edge of your brush and sort of scrape along some of those parts, and it'll, it'll keep your paint on the most raised bits by just going along the edge of your brush, dragging across. Uh, but it should look like that when you're done. So up next, we're going to do some Black Templar to clean up. So you can use it to cover up your mistakes if you got it into any of the, the cracks and crevices. You got that gold in there. This will just reinforce the shadow and, and kind of clean up all that. So when you're done that, now we're on to the finishing touches for that gold. We're going to use Vallejo Model Air's Chrome and just go in on all of the silver and gold and add little pings of highlight on there. That'll finish that off. Take your time, get creative, follow the way of the light. It is, it is true metallic, so you can literally see where the light is bouncing off. Just reinforce that. Here we just got a couple little pings, ping, 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 on all the gold ornate stuff. Doop, doop. It might seem like a lot, but just keep it going, keep on a roll, and before long, you'll be finished. Look at that. All done. All right, now onto the bookshelves. You can see we've already got that wood done from before, so we're moving on to Skeleton Horde. We're getting all these little bone parts done, all the added skulls and the skulls on the inside of the bookshelves. Just slather that on, saturate them. See here, we're getting the skull on the inside here saturate it make sure you get it all inside the crevices the eyes and all that junk and then of course don't forget about the paper some of these books are facing like towards us so just pick them out find where they are and hit them with some paint this time we're doing gulliman flesh for metallic gold blocking so anything that you want to be gold we're going to use gulliman flesh to block it in uh, so there's some kind of book ribbons. Uh, I think it's holding the book cover together, so like some latches. There's a little trophy thing, and then some, some book filigree here and there. So just go around, find out where that gold stuff is, and get it in there. Here we have Wraithbone. We're going over, as we always do, with the skulls and bones and stuff. So I got quite a few on the inside. You can also do it on the paper. I chose not to. And after that, well, we get into the real nitty gritty. We're going to do all the books, all the book covers and spines and all that stuff. Uh, so there's too many colors. 
for me to go over just pause when you see them I'll show you a couple clips here and there but I just uh, grabbed a bunch of colorful contrast paints that I had and went in and just going over here and there randomly just pick some spots mix it up be a little random stretch your creative bone this is where you get to really personalize uh, what your bookshelf could look like as opposed to somebody else how colorful or how not colorful it is you know you could do them all one color you could do it like a thematic so maybe it's uh, like dragon lance a white wizard a red wizard a black wizard those are the different kind of, of colored tomes that they have just have fun that all out of the way we're going back to our old friend rich peter armor for all the gold we're going to do the filigree the exact same way we did it on the cupboard so just being a little careful more careful than usual uh dragging the side of the brush along the details to, to keep it up onto the upper part the raised edges and then don't forget that we have a little trophy thingy in there like kettle or something uh, all the little designs on the inside, don't forget about those. Just dab on some of that Retributor armor. Back with the Black Templar. We're going to do that same shading cleanup that we did before. So just get it in all the cracks and crevices, anywhere that you had overspill up on the design, the ornate carving and uh, just clean up your work. Reichlin Flesh Shade Gloss this time because we have some stuff that's not the ornate carvings. And we're gonna use this um, on all the gold that's on the books. So all the little designs and decals and stuff like that. A little trophy in there as well. Pot, whatever the hell it is. <laughs> we're gonna do that thing as well. Lastly, when that's all dry, we're going to go back in with our chrome and we're going to do all the little light pings and we want to do all the little highlights and stuff. Really, you can use the light that's there to help guide you if you need any help. Again, before you know it, you'll be done. Starting us off here on the fireplace, we're going to use Skeleton Horde to do the stone behind the fireplace, as well as the fireplace itself, like the, the ornate marbling, and don't forget the skull that's on top. So we're just going to go all the way around and get all that going. Uh, the color scheme I chose is actually based off of the old cardboard fireplace that came with the original edition of Hero Quest. So in that picture, in, in the cardboard picture, it was like this sepia yellowy stone. So we're going to go with that. And then here we're going to go uh, a dry brush of our wraith bone and give a pretty heavy duty one, uh, at least when it comes to the tops of surfaces and stuff. But yeah, just go over, dry brush everything. You can dab and stab when it comes to the uppermost parts, and get some texture in there. And uh, you can even go over that skull. Okay, Basilicanum Gray for the rat's fur once more. We have another rat here. We're doing Basilicanum Gray for that fur. Gullum and Flesh for any gold blocking. I have some little potions that I added and chose to do some gold on top of those too. So for you guys, it should just be this little picture frame. 
But if you add anything on top, go ahead and do that too. Now to differentiate the bottom stone from the stone of the fireplace, we're going to use Nuln Oil and just get that all over the bottom. Just saturate it and get it all going. You can do one or two layers. You can even reinforce the, the big tile cracks and stuff. Uh, I think I just went with one layer on this. It was enough for me. Next up, we're just going back with that Gullum and Flesh. I totally forgot to do this little rat guy. So Gullum and Flesh on the tail, the nose, the ears, and the feeties. Wraith Bone. We're going to use this to highlight the skull. And we're also going to use it to clean up the fire as well as give a more consistent look to the fire. We don't actually want to have that black and white contrast in the fire. We want it to be really bright. So just cover that up. And again, we have Kislev Flesh here for highlighting on the rat's skin. So the toes, the ears, the nose, and the little tail ridges. We do have some wood on the fireplace, and that's the wood in the fireplace. We're going to use snake bite leather for that, just like we always do. So go around, be careful not to get any of it on the fire that you did. After that, we got another section where it's just be creative, use a bunch of colors. Uh, I'll put up some of the colors that I used, but again, you might not actually have these little extra bits and bobs, but I put bits and bobs on, so go crazy. Pick your most colorful or your not most colorful, whatever you're looking for, and paint up those little extras. After that, we went back to the good old crappy craft paint. We're just going to give that fire another coat of white because that wraith bone is a little warm white and we want one that's just more neutral, bright, bright white for what we're going to do later. Going back to the gold, we're just going to use Retributor Armor to go over all those parts that you did the gold blocking. So for me, it's that potion, and then of course for you guys, it is this uh, picture frame. And allow me to fast forward a little bit to where my head's not going to go into frame. That's better. But yeah, just apply the gold onto the picture frame like that. All right, we're gonna use Reichlin Flesh Shade Gloss again, and we're gonna put that on all the gold parts. The last thing for these little bits and bobs is we're gonna go back to our craft paint and we're gonna add just a couple little fake highlights as if these are crystals with really sharp edges. Even with the potion bottle, we're going to add some sheens and stuff. Then we have Yand and Yellow for the fire. So just cover all the fire with this and it's going to give us a good start. Really lay it on thick. Final touches for the gold. Now that that Reichland Flesh Shade has dried, we're going to go in with our chrome. Add our little highlights. this straight edge up here we can do some edge highlighting and you see I broke it apart that's to give it some texture on there I think it looks nice and here you see I completely forgot to film the rest of the painting the fireplace so <laughs> I guess I'll just explain uh, I took some blood angels red some grip hound orange and uh, I believe that is black templar and just feathered them into each other a little bit of water in between to feather them all together and Bob's your uncle. To finish off the fire though, we're gonna use Wraith Bone and we're gonna have that be the core of the thickest flames at the bottom touching the, the wood. The brightest flame is the hottest flame and that's gonna be what's touching the source. So in this case, it's gonna be the logs.
Now at this point you might have noticed that we're missing our painting. I'm not going to do any freehanding, instead I got something special. The original Hero Quest had a pretty kingly fellow, and here he is. So we're going to put this in there. Well, this is a little too big, but accidents happen. Uh, <laughs> we're going to put this little guy in there. Uh, it's based off the original Hero Quest painting. Uh, I found it online. I'll put a link in the description below where you can find it as well. And it, it should be sized according, and you just print it out and cut it out and put it in there. So here we've cut it out, and we're going to use this uh, whiteboard marker to black the, the edges where it got cut so that we don't see any white paper. So with that then, we just gotta get some super glue and put that thing down. We got a toothpick here to apply it with. Always recommend using a toothpick, putting your glue, uh, if it's like a little arm or whatever, put the glue somewhere else and use the toothpick to apply. Here we have a big flat surface, so it doesn't matter if we get a bead of the stuff. So put it down, we're gonna use our toothpick to spread it out. When it's all spread out, we're gonna grab our little painting and put it in there. So just line it up with the edge and... Here's where I'm gonna remind you that you should always measure and test fit before you put blobs of glue down and <laughs> mess up when your little piece of paper is way too big and you have to spend time cutting it down. So be sure to do that. <laughs> Here we go, it's all done. Nothing bad happened. It was the right size all along. So now that it's all glued into spot, we're gonna put some white glue on top as a little protective sealant. So just put a little blob somewhere, get a brush, it could be a scrappy, crappy brush, and just brush some on top. That'll seal it in, protect it, kind of stick it in there a little more before you varnish. All right, it's time to see what we've done. So here we go, we've got our little bookshelves, our cupboard and all that. So up first is the cupboard, look at that, all nice and finished. Lots of good wood grain detail in there, you can really see it. Lots of shadow, a little mouse on there looks good. I really like how the ornate gold carving came out on both the bookshelf and the cupboard. I think they look really cool. Having it be gilded rather than just straight wood carved, I think adds uh, a lot of detail to it. Really makes it pop. And here's our bookshelf with no accessories. Still looks pretty good. Still notice that it's a bookshelf and has a lot of personality. Even side by side, it stands out. You can tell that all the books are different colors and stuff too. Lastly, we've got our fireplace. Look at that. I really like how it kind of mixes the old and the new. So we have our new sculpt, but we have kind of our old inspirations with the paint scheme and the old Hero Quest painting. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button as well as letting me know down in the comments below. Also let me know what you're gonna put inside your fireplace painting. Are you gonna do some freehand? How about your favorite characters or some new artwork? If you haven't done so already, perhaps think about subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you know when new videos arrive. And with that, we're all done with the wall-style furniture for HeroQuest. See you in the next one. Bye-bye!